This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. In today's episode, you will learn how to send free SMS or text messages over long distance using Arduino boards, a pair of SX1278 LoRa transceiver modules, a pair of HC05 or HC06 Bluetooth modules, a 5 volt buzzer and a pair of smartphones with my designed Android application installed in. With my design project, you don't need a GSM network to send and receive free SMS or messages. We will exhibit how to use long range LoRa transceiver modules for sending free SMS. Before I start practical demonstration, I think it is necessary to share certain useful information with you so that you can better realize the significance of this all important project for yourself. When we are in an area where access to a GSM network coverage is available, then we can simply use our smartphone either to send messages or receive our calls. Under such a scenario, we do not have to need any kind of reliance on a LoRa network for sending messages. However, imagine yourself to be in an utterly different type of situation. Say you and your friends or teammates find yourself to be in a remote or mountainous kind of a region where GSM network facility is not available at all. Then how can it be possible to keep in touch or communicate with your team members or friends? Well, you have two options for tackling such a situation. Number one, you can either rely upon and carry an expensive handheld ready-made walkie-talkie portable two-way transceivers to such a place along with you, which obviously you cannot modify as per your requirement or according to your needs. These devices will only serve the purpose for which they have been designed and nothing else. Number two, the second and more pragmatic and effective kind of option which can be relied upon is to use my specially designed long range wireless SMS or text messaging system, which can be modified according to a situation and one's own requirements. You can even build a whole network from this system and as such, you can easily communicate with any member of your team quite easily. Moreover, multiple teams can remain interacted and communicate with each other. As I have said, it is a low cost project and if you watch my video with a little bit of concentration and follow my instructions carefully, I'm sure you can design this project by yourself maximum within an hour's time. Anyhow, enough with the talking. Now let us practically see this project in action. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultim Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultium Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultium 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts etc right in the design environment so you can focus on your designs links to the ultium designer ultium 365 and octopart are given in the description you can clearly see that both sides are 100 percent identical for understanding the concept conveniently i will term one of the sides is user one while referring to the second side is user two you can design similar circuits for other users as well by means of making such connections. Thus more and more people will get in touch and would be able to communicate and interact. 
anyways i will opt to continue just with user one and user two for demonstration purposes user one can both send as well as receive messages likewise user two can also send as well as receive messages the smartphones possessed by user one and user two are connected through bluetooth and you can see that my designed application is open on both these smartphones guys if you are interested to design an exactly similar type of android application you must watch my previous video you can find its link in the video description and if you want to use exactly this same application then you can download an apk file from our website the working of this project is pretty simple first a message is transmitted to bluetooth from a smartphone and then bluetooth forwards it to arduino then using lora arduino sends this message wirelessly to the remote side lora module on the other side arduino receives a message from lora and then forwards it to the smartphone application through bluetooth exactly the same process will be carried out on the user 2 side so let us move ahead and try to send some messages You have seen how easily we can send and receive free SMS or messages. However, one issue needs to be pointed out over here. If the application in a cell phone is not open or if the cell phone is off, then how will the user one or user two come to know that a person on the other side wants to talk to him? Let us say right now user one wants to talk with user two but the cell phone of user 2 is unluckily off under such a situation even if user 1 sends hundreds of messages user 2 will remain absolutely unaware of it to solve this issue i have connected a 5 fold buzzer with user 2 and connected an LED with user 1 if you want buzzers or LEDs can be connected on both sides otherwise you can also connect vibrators anyhow I have made a slight modification in its code after the connection of the buzzer and LED. Now I can send SMS as well as commands. For example, suppose I need to talk to user 2. So I will send 45 number as the command from my cell phone, which will turn on the buzzer on user 2 side. This will let user 2 know that user 1 wants to talk to me. Then user 2 can open the application and start communicating with user 1. Let me practically demonstrate it for you. User 2 can also send a command to user 1 in a similar fashion. Guys, modification in its code is not much of an issue and you can easily modify it according to your need. You can also define multiple commands as per your requirements. Anyhow, I'm sure by now you might have got an idea of how does this system work. So without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. 
The VCC of the LoRa module is connected with the 3.3 volt of the Arduino. The MISO pin of the LoRa module is connected with the Arduino pin 12. The MOSI pin is connected with pin 11. The SCK pin of the LoRa module is connected with pin 13. The NSS pin is connected with the Arduino's pin 10 and the ground pin of the LoRa module is connected with the Arduino's ground. On the left side, you can see a 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM705 voltage regulator. We use this regulated 5 volts to power up the Arduino and all the other electronics. The VCC and ground pins of the HC05 Bluetooth module are connected with the Arduino 5 volt and ground pins, while the TXT and RXD pins of the Bluetooth module are connected with the RX0 and TX1 pins of the Arduino Nano. A 5 volt buzzer is connected with the Arduino pin 3. If the buzzer draws more current and it doesn't turn on then you can use a driver circuit as explained in my previous LoRa based project. You can see the driver circuit simply consists of a 2N2222 NPN transistor and a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now let's take a look at the programming. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download the LoRa library from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. If you take a look at the code of user1 and user2, you will find that both the codes are 100% the same. The only difference is in the local address and destination address. If you want to add another user, then simply add another address. For this, you can watch my video on LoRaWAN in which multiple LoRa nodes communicate with the master LoRa node. Anyway, let me explain the user1 code. The buzzer is connected with pin 3 of the Arduino. I also defined some variables of the string and integer types which are well commented. Inside the loop function we check if any data is available on the serial port means if the data is received from the Bluetooth module then read the entire string and store it in the variable my message and then send this message to the remote LoRa module. The on receive function monitors if any data is received from the LoRa module. Let's say if data is received then the incoming message is split and first we check if the received data is a command, if it's 45 turn on the buzzer, and if not, then send this message to the Android cell phone application. You can see I'm simply using serial.print as a function as the Bluetooth module is connected with the Arduino's default serial port. Get value function is a user defined function, and it is used to split a string message using any character as the delimiter. I have already explained this function in very detail, so that's all about the programming. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.